Hello, me again. <laughs> I'm Michelle again. So you've probably heard that we're really into the use of cost services and least cost paths. You've also heard how we think terrain is really very important in how to make them and actually have an accurate result. What we found, though, for our research is that, uh, well, firstly, very few people seem to study terrain. So this is quantification of Herzog's again review, where they looked at the number of uh, papers which uh, use different coefficients. So slope, for example, we have uh, everyone uses slope. And then the next highest uh, one used is water. Uh, land cover or terrain actually uh, loses out to that. So, um, and we wonder if the reason for that is that there's less scientifically observed data. So conversations from the QA before were saying, well, we only have these multipliers, and that's true. These ones are basically based on um, observed data. I'll say who from in a second. We have other multipliers. These ones are based on time, um, which are based on the EU, uh, uh, an EU sort of project. They don't cite where, what these are based on. Actually, if you have a look here, it says it takes you two minutes to cross an artificial surface. So presumably that's for a car. It's definitely not human movement. So it's not <laughs> relevant for our work, unless you're Superman. Um, and then we have other, we have other uh, tables here, which is just based, based on some person's perception of that landscape. So really, all the data we had were these multipliers here. Now, there's a problem with these. These are all energy-based uh, multipliers. So they say how many Mars bars it takes you to cross that same t territory, not how many more minutes. So that's an issue, firstly, because a lot of times people are using those multipliers with time-based models. Similarly, the, the data was observed off a fit young 21-25-year-old. Uh, yeah, 2021, meaning you know, about 2021. You know, basically prime of your life uh, males who you know, are going to rush across these surfaces. Um, not, no females, no people of varying ages at all. Um, and I say all the energy was uh, measured in energy expenditure. Now, there's actually very few studies when you consider the amount of uh, uh, information put in on the time coefficients uh, perspective. We have raw data studies here um, all around the 1970s, all of which have had their own interpretations in these different formulas. You saw that in the last presentation, um, but none of them which study time. So we wanted to uh, improve that a little bit. So what we wanted to do firstly was actually create a time-based model because no one had done that before. Um, we wanted then to see whether actually you can combine to write, uh, time and energy. Are they the same? Um, similarly, are terrain coefficients similar for males and females? Um, do they work for different age groups? And then similarly, in the earlier studies, what they did was they weighed down those uh, individuals with about okay, 30% of their body weight, wasn't it? So we wanted to see whether that weighing down really affected that movement, because obviously that's really important in any archaeological context. Are you, uh, you know, Michelle's cast? Does that slow you down carrying that extra information or weight? So how are we going to do this? This is very much a trial study. We managed to get some funding from uh, Euston Off College, so thank you very much to them. And we gathered 10 participants of varying uh, ages, sexes, and backgrounds when it came to walking. What we did was we took them to a variety of locations. Um, we told them to walk along 200 meter strips laid out by flags, uh, just at their own pace. There was no other guidance for that. And we timed them with stopwatches. So a very basic experiment in that uh, context. Um, we then told them to have a bit of a rest just check what the next slide is. These are the locations. We then told them to have a little bit of a rest at each of those stops. Then we weighed them down and made them walk it again. And again, we timed those. <laughs> bit slow and they were weighed down with 30% of their body weight. We went by a percentage so small people weren't squished yeah. or anything. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Don't feel too bad for them. I had to carry it all back each time. So, <laughs> so uh, we did that across uh, well, these five different locations, but it's actually across six different terrains. So we had them on what was essentially a dirt uh, path, some very, you know, very pretty lawn grass with some sports fields. We managed to take a few people to the beach. That was nice. Um, this was the sort of thing which uh, you sunk into about your heel. So it was very dune sand, I should uh, state that. We then took them to a very rugged area um, near High Force, which is what we're calling High Brush. And then we also took them around, I think this is the bog here, so not horrible marshy land, and then across some rocky terrain. So a real variety. These were designed to complement those uh, coefficients we've already been studied and add a few more. Okay. Um, one thing we wanted to highlight was actually we, we know our subjects did walk at a natural pace. They weren't spurred on by us timing them because actually what we found is we timed them from 0 to 100 metres and then 100 metres to 200 metres and we found they kept an even pace throughout. So basically through generous giving of chairs, coffees and teas, they were pretty comfortable. So we, we think we have some good data in that regard. So now I'm going to pass you to Michelle, our project lead, who's going to discuss all the exciting results. Yes, yeah, so... Um 
what these charts show is the results um, of each of the different terrains uh, divided into, by sex and age group. Um, so male subjects are in orange or red, um, red if they're younger, orange if they're older. Um, females are blue and green. Um, younger um, ones are in blue, older ones are in green. Um, but uh, just looking at them right now all together as a as total population and worrying about that, you can see that um, there are actually some differences so, um, we just, um, and, and in fact, um, what we have is that there's a third author who's not here today, James Edward, out of the math department. He was very kindly helped us analyze this. Um, and he has a two sample t test. Um, we decided on 95% significance level. Um, and it found that, in fact, what we could already tell from the number of seconds that it took people to finish, um, that there are, in fact, statistically significant differences between the different terrains. So um, these are the co terrain coefficients that we generated that are time-based. Um, and as you can see, the probabilities, the p-values, are actually quite good and, in fact, well past the 95% uh, mark. So pavement um, is set to 1. That's an artificial designation, and it's in keeping with the original studies. All the original studies set pavement as 1, so we did the same. Then all the other numbers are relative to pavement which is set at one. So um, if you walk across a swampy bog, as some people got to, um, it will take you 1.79 times as long as pavement, ignoring all other features. And it should be said that we kept to flat ground. We did not go on any slopes. We were very careful about it because we didn't want to introduce any other variables. And so these are the numbers that we have. So then um, we had these other questions about age and sex. So with age, um, if we look at these, you can see, I mean, they are quite um, closely clustered. Uh, if you look at like the orange and red, they're in the same place, basically same here. And same with the blue and green, they tend to be in the same place. Um, and in fact, uh, there does not appear to be a statistically significant, well, there isn't a statistically significant difference between someone who's between the age of 20 and 35 and someone who's between the age of um, 36 and 50 in this case. Um, then looking at uh, sex, um, the same thing mostly. So um, across all of them, the only one where there was a statistical, um, statistically significant difference was surprisingly the lawn grass, where women perf um, performed um, significantly slower uh, than the male subjects. Um, so that's actually something interesting and, and something that's worth um, exploring with a larger sample and, and replicating. So we were really quite surprised, long grass of all of them. Um, so we had everyone walk with a weighted pack, 30% of their body weight, as Ed said. Um, and this is in keeping with the proportions of the original studies that measured energy. And, um, and actually, that didn't seem to matter, um, to a point. Uh, so where it did matter, is um, in absolute weight. Uh, and this was not most noticeable in the bog. Um, now, for various reasons, we only had uh, three participants that were able to walk on the bog. Um, it was bad weather one day, and our first dater just told us, no, um, people will get hypothermia, please go home. Um, <laughs> but on the, the other day, we got on um, three. And um, what we noticed is that uh, the smallest participant um, did not sink into the bog at all. It didn't break through the surface and was just able to walk across it. It was no big deal, like walking across anything else. But um, larger participants sunk into the bog, and one of them lost their boot and actually got really quite stuck. Um, so absolute weight might be an important factor, um, though not necessarily being weighted. And then, um, and then we found that the smallest participant, once we threw a, some weights on the back, um, they did start to sink like everyone else. So being small is good for a bog. Um, so that was interesting. And, uh, and then, of course, um, some, a really important finding we had is that energy and time-based models are not interchangeable. Um, they do not occur on the same scale. Our differences can, we have statistically um, significant differences at the hundredth place mark, whereas the energy-based terrain coefficients are working on the, um, the first uh, decimal. Um, so it's a completely different scale. On top of that, um, it's not even just uh, the values, but in fact, the relationship between different terrains, which ones are harder than others, change. So um, the, for us, it was loose sand and bog, if I remember right, um, occur in different orders between our terrain coefficients and the original energy ones. 
so they're really, really not interchangeable. You cannot use them. Um, you cannot use a time-based coefficient on a f easiest root model, and you cannot use a energy-based Turing coefficient on a fastest roots model. It's completely inappropriate. Um, so one of the good news is we found is that, um, as I said, there wasn't that much of a, there wasn't any difference between male and female subjects except on long grass. So that the fact that the original studies are based only on young male subjects may not be problematic um, for uh, models that are um, using energy. Um, and studying uh, females moving across the landscape. Of course, it is a different variable, so it, it, it should still be studied, but it, preliminary indications it might not be a problem. Um, but of course, <laughs> what, what we did learn in um, the case, really terrible weather, is that exposure and weather definitely do play a significant factor. And um, yeah, it, it definitely does. Um, wind is really important. Um, and so these are additional factors that might be interesting to study um, for the future to quantify. So we can start incorporating them in our models if we have a site that is really exposed. Um, and another really interesting thing relates to how um, fast roots can um, form in uh, some terrain. So in the tall grass, um, high brush kind of landscape, you can see that there's a couple of points that are way out. It's the one that's not closely clustered. And the reason for that is this is person number one who walked, this is person number two who walked, and then this is everyone else, by which point the grass had been mashed down. And um, so whereas person number one was wading through, <laughs> drying up the, about hip height, um, these people were actually just walking across flat and grass. Um, and so that's actually um, really interesting that it occurs that quickly, three people, and you're already at this point. Um, in terms of thinking about, well, like Bronze Age landscapes in Britain, um, with all these sites, um, which ones it's, are important. But really what's most important is that this shows we need to get out and get more data. So if all of you guys want to replicate this, that'd be fantastic for all your parts of the world. Because right now all we have are those nine turn coefficients from the Eastern Europe U.S. for energy-based models, and that's not representative of the whole world. And all we have for time are the ones that Ed and I calculated in the north of England, which is nothing like my Near Eastern <laughs> landscapes, I assure you. <laughs> and, and we need to generate more of them. And that's, it's, there's no problem in doing it. So get out and get more data. And if you want help on how to do it, I'm happy to tell you how. Um, and we need more numbers. So um, thank you to everyone who's helped us out on this. And uh, thank you for listening again.